Hello, it's Phil. Nice to see you. Today I am in my space because anywhere that I am doing science is my space. The same goes for you. Science, technology, engineering, maths, science can happen anywhere. So anywhere you're doing science, it's your space. And today we're talking a little bit about some stuff that happens in space. Things that move around other things. What might you call them? Satellites. We're talking about satellites in circular motion. And we're going to not go up into space, but we're going to talk a little bit about it. <laughs> we're outside. It's a little chilly, but it's a nice day. One of us brought a jacket. Didn't give me his. I have a hoodie, but we're fine. We're going to talk about big things in the sky, like the moon. This is a really big thing that you see every evening, pretty much. And the moon moves around our Earth in a circular motion. Keeps going round and round and round. It gets a little bit closer sometimes, but generally it's just going round and round in a circular motion. It's not getting pulled too close or it doesn't go flying off in another direction off into space. That is because gravity is pulling the moon towards us. And even though the moon wants to go flying off in another direction, the gravity that's pulling us there, the same thing that when you drop something, that, that something falls to the ground, moon keeps staying in a circular motion around the Earth and not going flying off <laughs> into <laughs> oblivion. It doesn't because the Earth's gravity is pulling it towards the Earth. And the same is true that's happening at the centre of our solar system. Because we have that big burny thing at the centre of our solar system, the sun. So the sun is a big massive object and because it's so big it keeps pulling things towards it, like other planets, like our Earth. So you can imagine gravity like a string pulling things towards. So even though with Saturn it wants to fall down this way, gravity is pulling it towards the middle of the sun. So Saturn is going around orbiting and it wants to fly off in all different directions. If I let go, it would fly off. But you can imagine like gravity's like a string. It's kind of balancing the force, keeping it together towards the center of our solar system. So Saturn keeps moving in an orbit around the sun, which is nice. Now, this is kind of a little bit abstract. Skelly's just had an accident. And I'll be back with you momentarily. <laughs> <laughs> now this is all nice, but it's kind of a little bit abstract. So I thought we'd do something a little bit more visual and something you could potentially try yourself safely. Uh, if I just need a little bit of apparatus. Skelly, can you get me a bucket of water, please? Yeah, whoa, whoa, that's enough. Yeah, look, enough. Thank you. Stop. So Skelly has filled the bucket with water, just to prove that I am not... Fibbing. Yeah, just go that. Look fabulous. Uh, so there's water in this bucket, and what I thought I'd do is that I would try and turn this upside down over my head without the water falling out. Okay, so bucket of water. I'm going to try and turn it upside down over my head. It's going to be falling at about the same, exactly the same rate as the bucket. So the water's going to want to fall. The bucket's going to be falling at the same rate. So it should stay in the bucket because things that are moving have inertia. They want to go and stay in going in the same direction with that same speed until another force acts on them. So if I was holding this bucket here, I'm not spilling it on myself right now, gravity is pulling it down. It wants to fall to the ground. But the balancing force going in the other direction is me holding the handle. So there is a balance between the force going up and the force going down. OK, so let's try it. Now, you can try this at home yourself as well. But I will say try it outside, not inside. And try it with a bucket that isn't metal. Try it like, it's, like this is a metal handle, but it's a plastic bucket. Try it with no water first. Um, and also have a responsible adult around. Like, you need to be safe. Take care with what you do. So we're going to try and do this now. So I'm going to try and spin this now. So I'm going to start nice and Starting is never an issue. Stopping kind of is. You ready? So we ready? The tension is unbelievable. <laughs> you ready? Bucket strong. Three, two, one. OK, so now I'm swinging the bucket and there is a load of water inside it. Now, right now, the bucket is upside down over my head, but the water is staying in it because it's moving at exactly the same pace and falling at the same rate as the bucket. And because it's going in a circular motion, like satellites, it keeps going round and round and round and doesn't fall on top of me. And the good thing about this is that even if I go in another direction, why did you put so much water in this? That even in another circular motion, the water doesn't come out. <laughs> now, starting isn't the issue, but stopping, whoop, whoa, that was so close, it doesn't. 
Okay, so we're gonna slow down, slow, 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 slow. Uh -huh. See? There we go. Just, just to prove, look there. There's water in this. So, what I thought we might do to show that even, because you can't see the water in the bucket, is do something even more dramatic, even more impressive, just using the same little bit of science, simple science, that we've done here. So this circular motion, things want to stay in the same place. So what I thought I'd do is I'd take a tray, a little, little whiteboard tray, I put two, four strings on it so that it can be supported like this, and I have a beaker, and I am going to add some of the water that we had that Skeddy put earlier on. I'm going to pour it into to this, and then I'm going to, just so you can be able to see what's going on, I'm just going to add some blue food dye into it, which will look amazing. And then I am going to try and pick this up. If you didn't see the water in the bucket, but you can see the water in this. I'm going to spin it around my head, and yeah, so if you're trying this at home yourself, well, try it outside, possibly get a responsible adult, a responsible person to be able to, to do this with you. Start just with spinning, then with no water. Don't use glass, just, this is a plastic, plastic top. So just be careful trying it, like, it's, experimenting is good, but do it safely, safety first. Okay, so force at the moment balanced. Gravity pulling down, strings pulling up. Okay, so let's go try, so that bit, that bit I could do. Starting is never an issue. Stopping, however, potentially might be. Okay, so we're gonna go so far, and... <laughs> Yes! Okay, I should have trusted this, but yes, it's working perfectly. Water on a thing, not fixed to anything, going round my head. <sighs> so, yes, for more information on all the stuff that we do, go to rte.ie forward slash learn. Try this out yourself in a safe environment with responsible people around. Like I said, starting this is never an issue. Stopping potentially is. Um, uh, maybe I can get a little help. Um, <laughs> Scotty? Oh, you're not helping. Oh, nearly let go. Oh, sorry. Uh, uh, anyone? Oh, I might be here for a while. Okay, see you next time. Help. <sighs> <sighs> <laughs> Hello and welcome to my dark space today because this is what we're going to do today. We're going to work with some light, well, some fire. We're doing a fire experiment. I am Phil and I am in my space today, but this is an experiment that you can do with responsible adults. You have probably done this type of reaction, but in a different way or related to something else. We are going to be mixing baking soda and vinegar, which you normally might use for a volcano type experiment to get the bubbles to come up. But what we want to talk today is actually the chemical reaction that happens and introduce you to what happens when you mix two things together. Because you always get something that is produced at the end of it and it might not necessarily what was be what you had at the very start. We are going to talk about fire extinguishers and various fire extinguishers you might see around your school, different buildings, and you'll see on the side of them, some of them have foam, some of them have other things, and even some of them have CO2 written on it. And what CO2 means is carbon dioxide. So carbon and two oxygens. And carbon dioxide is after you breathe in, <gasps> oxygen, and your lungs do their thing, and their blood brings it round, and it comes back out. <sighs> when you breathe out, you breathe out carbon dioxide. It is a safe, natural chemical gas that is around everywhere. But it is also very useful for putting out fires. So for fires, there is a fire triangle and you need three things for it to be able to burn. You need heat, a fuel, and some oxygen for it able to be combust. And what we are going to do today is we are going to use, because I have fire here and it is lighting me greatly, uh, we are going to use this reaction of vinegar and bicarbonate of soda to be able to mix things together. They have a chemical name after it that they mix together, but they produce carbon dioxide. And you might have seen this happen, like I said, in reactions when you do the volcano. So I'm going to take bicarbonate of soda, also known as baking soda, and when I add vinegar to it, which is an acid, when I mix this in here, you'll see that it fizzes. It raises up, rises up, raises up, rises up, and inside each of these bubbles is some carbon dioxide. And I've measured it perfectly that it should just stop at the top and not overspill. I mean, like, I've done this really a lot. Oh. 
Phew, I was about to lose my reputation as a measurement scientist there. But inside this, the bubbles are bursting, but the carbon dioxide is staying in the glass because it is heavier than air. It sits down the bottom, so it doesn't want to flow up all over the place. And when I have it like this, and I pour out the carbon dioxide inside here, you see it goes out because the carbon dioxide is one of the things that you don't need for fire. For fire, whoop, you need oxygen, you need fuel, and you need heat. So if you pour the carbon dioxide, the air, which is made up of the gas, the carbon dioxide, is heavier than air, so it sits at the bottom and it pours out like a liquid. When you're in your school and you see a, a fire extinguisher that has CO2 on it, when you pull that and aim it at a fire, it's pushing away the oxygen. Or if you have a water one and that you fire it at a fire, it takes away the heat or even washes away some of the fuel or even pushes away some of the oxygen. Now, I want to show you this a little bit bigger because we always want to try things a little bit bigger. So for this, I have a a bigger jug filled with more of the same chemical, bicarbonate of soda, and I have a bigger amount of vinegar. So we're gonna mix them together. Now, what do we think is gonna happen when I mix these two together? We've already seen it happen. Exactly. So we should be seeing bubbles happening. So when I pour this in, we should see bubbles and they should be carbon dioxide filled. And you're gonna see that same fizz, that bubbly reaction. So inside each of these bubbles is carbon dioxide. And then I'm going to lift up this tray, which I have oh, a load of candles in. And it is sloped towards me. So when I pour the carbon dioxide in here, not the liquid, the gas, it should travel down and extinguish the candles. Should. But this is an experiment. We don't know if it's going to happen, but let's give it a go. So, oh, there we go. See this side, they've gone out. They've gone out this side. You can see the smoke from them. No liquid is coming out, but the gas is going out. All of them going out. Going out. I've got to pour them here, this one. Oh, I've only one left, one left, one left, left. No, we'll use the old fashioned way for this one. Perfect. Because with, even with blowing air, you're pushing away what is used, or you're cooling it down, or you're even pushing away oxygen for it to keep igniting. Simple things with carbon dioxide. Chemicals are everything. And understanding them and knowing how they work in the world and even seeing it in practical, happening in real life in your school, seeing how a carbon dioxide fire extinguisher works means that you are understanding science technology. And when you go to design your next adventure and your next invention, you can figure out what you need to do to make it all happen and make your life safe. Perfect. And also you can make dramatic entrants and exits like this if I slip into the darkness. Check out www.40.ie forward slash learn. Lots of lesson plans. Am I in the dark? I don't know. So I'll just run off this way. <laughs>